Before we begin, I would like to apologize for my speech in some parts of this video, because, as you'll be able to tell, I'm not really the best at talking at times. Anyways, let's get on. With the isekai subgenre still being alive somehow with more shows than the off-brand Shakespeare, I feel like it's time to go over the real masterpiece of isekai. With the second season coming out this summer due to delay, it's time to time travel back to April 6 of 2016 and go over why ReZero is still one of the most fantastic otherworldly anime to this day. I'm sure we've all dreamed of traveling to another world to escape this never-ending hellhole we call reality, but what would happen if those beautiful daydreams actually came true? We get to travel with Subaru on his journey of a beautifully horrific and agonizing life in another world. If you missed the initial announcement and are still sitting around eagerly hoping for a surprise launch in spring, it's a good idea to go ahead and shelf excitement for now. It's not all bad, though, because ReZero sees Season 2 has just been postponed to July 2020, so we don't have too extremely long to wait. When you wake up in a place that's completely opposite from what you're used to and you have no idea how you got there, what would your initial reaction be? Option A would be you panic and possibly start crying with no form of hope whatsoever. Option B, however, is take it and fucking run with it like our man Subaru. Well, mostly. Everything is fine and swell before you realize you have no clue where to begin, no superhuman powers, and the only thing you really get at is dying. Yep, other than thinking life is now a video game for the first few episodes of the show, Subaru comes to the realization that not only is he in his dream world, but he can also resurrect from death. Only downside to this power is that during death you still feel every last bit of pain before you die. It's scenarios like in episode 15, where Subaru walks into a mansion filled with nothing but dead bodies and all the episodes leading up to it that makes you take something into consideration. That being, this is some real ass shit. Unlike most other anime in Isekai where the main protagonist is extremely overpowered and godlike with no real sense of danger, ReZero takes the complete opposite route and lives up to its dark fantasy tag, telling us, hey, you know your dreams of escaping reality? Well, this is probably what would happen to most of you. When we follow Subaru on his quest to play hero, it doesn't just give us a sense of danger, rather it shows us every bit of despair and anguish between the small victories. When you realize after dying a countless number of times that nothing will really change unless you do first, I'm sure a lot of us would feel a lot like Subaru and start getting driven mentally insane. Realism is something that a lot of the time is left out in shows like these, and I feel that's why me along with everyone else grew to love this anime so much. It shows us that sometimes, even if we give our best effort in something, not everything will go the way we planned. Even if a few minor things changed when adapting from the light novel of the show itself, it still managed to get the point across, and pretty damn well at that, seeing the first season came out four years ago, had the whole community in a daze from its brilliance, and is still talked about and quoted to this day. And that was even before season 2 was officially announced. With shows like Problem Children or Coming From Another World where you can turn off your brain and not think about the plot because there really is none, it's fine because that's what those type of shows excel at doing. However, if you go into ReZero doing the same thing, you won't be able to fully grasp the beauty of the storyline and it may leave you bored and unengaged. But while I say that, if you also go into the story digging into the plot, you will find some hidden meanings with the lore, but that's not where the real treasure hides. The real gold of ReZero is hidden within the characters themselves, with each of them having their own layers and meaning behind them, which is the reason some of them clash no matter the situation. I can say with confidence this is one of the few anime that can get away with reliving past moments from previous episodes, since the characters themselves are so engaging and interesting. It's also worth noting that it's extremely intriguing and grasping that almost every time Subaru does die, we're able to see different sides of the specific characters giving us a whole new outlook on them for the given situation. Take Amelia for example. At the beginning of the show, she tells Subaru to call her by the name Satella, which we later find out is the witch that everybody despises. She seems like a nice person at first, and don't get me wrong, she is. But when Subaru dies and resets, he calls out to her, so he calls her by Satella, which is the only name who knew her by, from the first time, and she gets extremely pissed off and doesn't think twice about leaving him behind. Rewind to when I was talking about character development earlier, and take that exact situation into account. When Amelia gives Subaru the cold shoulder after being called the worst name you can think of in this world, which in this case makes complete sense, we learn throughout the span of the next few episodes why she was so angry with it as well as curious to know how Subaru knew the name when he told her he wasn't from around the place they were in. That being said, from the people who have only watched the anime, 
You see that no matter how hard he tries to tell someone he can resurrect, the spirit of the witch decides to play patty cake with his beating heart. I too would probably give up on giving anyone information about me. Back when poor Subaru was on Earth in Japan, he was nothing more than the lonely otaku, which trust me, I understand because some of you guys are the only people that I can talk to about this stuff without you looking at me like I just murdered your grandparents. That being said, Subaru has read his fair share of manga and expects certain unrealistic things when that dream becomes reality. However, he quickly learns that everything he has known up to this point was complete and utter bullshit. He quickly has to adapt to this real life fantasy world that has their own form of problems that closely resemble his home. Why does he have to adapt so quickly? For the reason being, if he doesn't, Lagunica is going to chew his ass up and grind him between its teeth, almost as if he was back in Japan and labeled a Nazi. Even though at some points of the story that would probably be more forgiving. From not being able to read a room and tell that everyone is thinking he's a hype junkie, which in some cases is true, Subaru comes to grow more and more throughout the series after realizing the source of the problem is probably himself. With situations like the crook in the alleyway, he realizes the peak of his own stupidity and lack of direction. However, many times it may take, he still inevitably does learn from it. For people that haven't read the light novels, Subaru learning from his mistakes are what more or less drive the suspense of the plot. You're more likely to watch how Subaru learns from his own mistakes and with some cases less likely focused on what's happening next. It's amazing to see the growth of every character in ReZero and how all of that plays into the story with scenarios like Rim trying to kill Subaru with a giant ball of death to absolutely being in love with Subaru and willing to do anything for him, at times, our half-wit protagonist. You can tell Subaru is not out to kill, rather he thrives off the impulse which sometimes leads to the situations he finds himself in. And the whole premise of this beautifully dark storyline is way more than meets the eye. You just have to be willing to search rather than expect it to be handed to you. From the fight choreography, the sound design, and the hidden lore in ReZero is what makes it so enjoyable to watch and is precisely what keeps me coming back to it and waiting for season 2 while I catch up on reading the light novels. I also want to note that it means the world to me to know that I can discuss these subjects with you all, even if it provokes some uneasy emotions in you. Always feel free to let me know your personal thoughts in the comments so we can discuss it. I love having conversations with you guys. And if you're new here, also make sure to subscribe. That way I can also practice talking and, you know, giving speeches and whatnot because I've messed up quite a few times in this video, but that's besides the point. But I want to hopefully keep you guys entertained while also discussing this community's hypes and crashes. I want this channel to be less like a speech and more like a friendly discussion or debate depending on the subject or your thoughts on anything in the community. You guys make me feel at home here and I hope my channel makes you feel the same exact way.